When it comes to 30 and 50 amp shore power for RVs, there are a few misconceptions. And hopefully this video will provide some clarity on this topic. Two common questions RVers often have are, what do I tell the electrician if I want to have RV service wired at my home? And is 50 amps 120 or 240 volts AC? We will start with an explanation of 50 amp service as that seems to be the most confusing and everything else will make sense once we have that concept understood. So what is 50 amp service actually called? Unfortunately, nobody can even decide that. If you're a historian, you may call it an Edison system, or if you're an electrical engineer, you may refer to it as split phase, or an electrician may call it three pole four wire. And even the National Electrical Code, Section 551, which deals with RVs and RV parks, refers to 50 amp service as both three wire and three pole four wire. Given this variation, the learned person will recognize all of these terms as equivalent and interchangeable. The next difficulty our viewers have is 50 amp, is it 120 volts AC or is it 240 volts AC? And even RV manufacturers manuals such as this one calls it 50 amp 120 volts. Well in reality it is actually 50 amp 240 volts. However, we can wire the electrical panel in such a way as to obtain 120 volts AC service, and that is where the confusion is. And to demonstrate that, we're going to disconnect our power cable and we're going to measure the voltage. If we go from leg to leg, and there we go, 243 volts. So this is a 240 volt system from leg 1 to leg 2. So how do we get 120 volts from this system? If we go from neutral to one leg, we measure 121 volts. And then if we go from neutral to the other leg, we also measure 121 volts. And if we measure the two legs on our panel, we're measuring 240 volts from leg one to leg two. So we have 240 volts on this panel. And then of course, if we go from the neutral to one leg, we have 120 volts and neutral to the other leg, we also have 120 volts. So you see, we have 240 volts coming in here to the main breakers, but then we have two legs that go down to these breakers and these breakers are all using half of the 240 volts and it's going to be easier to explain this on a piece of paper because I think you'll find a couple things that are interesting. So let's visualize a generic 120 volt AC circuit and with a 60 watt bulb a half an amp should flow through the light bulb. But then what if we change the voltage on this circuit to 240 volts AC? Well, we know that would not work. Too much current would flow through the light bulb and damage it. But here's an idea. What if we put those light bulbs in series? Then you'd have two light bulbs that would drop 120 volts across each one. Everything would work fine. And this is the very principle behind the 120, 240, 50 amp service. If you can understand this simple concept, you will understand how everything works when we tie it all together. Unfortunately, this is not a very practical circuit because say we put a switch on one light bulb, we turn the switch on and off, both light bulbs are going to turn on and off, so we cannot switch the bulbs on and off independently. The second issue is if we have unbalanced loads. In this example, we have a 120 watt bulb and a 60 watt bulb. And as you can see here, the voltage on the 60 watt bulb is going to be 160 volts. The voltage on the 120 watt bulb is going to be 80 volts. So we have a voltage imbalance. So for this scheme to work, the loads have to be exactly the same, which is not practical. Fortunately, there is a solution that will work. But to understand that, we have to know how we get the 240 volts to begin with. Typically, the RV park or your residence is fed by a much higher voltage than 240 volts. 
Depending on your location, this could be anywhere from 480 volts to over 12,000 volts. It goes through a step-down transformer that's located on a power pole or in the vault adjacent to the property, and it's dropped down to 240 volts. The transformer secondary contains a center tap. The center tap essentially divides the voltage in half. We still have 240 volts across the entire secondary, but now we have 120 volts on each side of the center tap. And the center tap technique is commonly called split phase. So now we have our series circuit, but with a center tap reference in the center. So how does that help us with two different sized light bulbs? Well, as you may know, alternating current means that the current goes one direction for half the cycle, then the other direction for the other half. So in the first half cycle, one amp flows out of the top of the transformer and through the 120 watt light bulb supplying the one amp that it needs. However, the lower light bulb, being a 60 watt bulb, only needs half an amp. So half an amp is returned to the transformer via the center tap and the other half amp continues through the lower light bulb back through the bottom part of the transformer and that way it gives us the one amp for the 120 watt bulb and the half amp for the 60 watt bulb. And in the second half cycle, it reverses. Half an amp goes out of the transformer through the 60 watt bulb. Another half amp is through the center tap and both of them combined go through the 120 watt bulb, which provides one amp and then one amp is returned to the transformer. And if we put a switch on one of the light bulbs, the same thing happens. If the switch is open for the one amp bulb, then one and a half amp goes from the transformer through the lower bulb and back to the center tap. So the center tap always carries the differential current. That is a current that is different between one leg and the other. So this is how we can get a 240 volt circuit to supply 120 volts to two loads and yet they're independent. And it should be noted that if both loads were identical, we wouldn't need the center tap. So the center tap is only there for loads that are not the same. And from a historical perspective, a hundred years ago, Thomas Edison was having trouble with trying to get the loads balanced on his system. He came up with this solution and that's why it's also called an Edison system. And when we put it into RV terms, we simply put a 14-50R receptacle on the power pole that's why sometimes this is called a three-wire system. And if we wanted to label the wires, the two ends of the transformer are known as L1 and L2, or leg one and leg two. The center tap is called the neutral. Further, the neutral is usually grounded to ground. So this is how the term three-pole four-wire came about. And in fact, other than the connector, this is pretty much identical to the system that you have in your home. We could also connect a TT30R 30 amp connector to each leg. That would give us two independent 30 amp circuits at 120 volts AC. This would typically power two RVs with 30 amp service. Neither RV would ever have 240 volts in their electrical panel. And another variation may be a 20 amp receptacle in place of one of the 30 amp receptacles and it will provide 120 volt service as well. And then finally it's not uncommon to have a pedestal that has all three that is 50 amp service, 30 amp service, and 20 amp service. And of course the 50 amp service will provide 120 or 240 volts while the 30 and 20 amp service will provide 120 volts only. Please understand these are just conceptual drawings. They don't include everything that you need, such as breakers, surge suppressors, or any other thing that is in the panel. So do not use these schematics to do any wiring in your RV. And if you go to my website at rv-project.com, and I'll provide the link in the upper right-hand corner here, I do show all the various kinds of specialized connectors that you may find in your RV. So what have we learned so far? The regulatory authority for RV campground wiring is the NFPA Publication 70, 
commonly known as the National Electrical Code. And while the NFPA is not a government agency, federal and state governments, as well as virtually all local governments, have adopted these as regulations, so they are law. Further, the RV Industry Association has also adopted these standards for their minimum requirements for manufacturers to follow. So when in doubt, consult the National Electrical Code, Section 551, which covers RV parks and RV wiring. So the answer to the first question, what do I ask for when contracting with an electrician to provide either 30 or 50 amp service at my house for my RV? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, Simply ask them to provide 30 amp or 50 amp service in accordance with the National Electrical Code Section 551. Any competent electrician should know what that contains, and if you get the deer in the headlight look, find another electrician. You should also know that 30 amp service is 120 volts, and 50 amp service is 240 volts at 50 amps. In fact, many of the high-end RVs, such as the multi-million dollar motorhomes, have appliances such as water heaters or dryers that do require 240 volts. However, most of us that have 50 amp service in our RVs have electrical panels that are wired that only give us two legs of 120 volt service, even though it is actually fed by 240 volts. So in reality, we have 100 amp service because we can get 50 amps from each leg. And finally, 50 amp service is known as split phase, Edison, three wire, or three pole four wire, depending on your background. The goal of this video is to provide some history, background, and familiarization of how RV electrical systems are wired. This is not a guide for instructions for the do it yourselfer to work on his electrical equipment. Please refer any electrical wiring issues to a qualified electrician.